across the animal kingdom, in order to um, become an adult, an animal has to master four core competencies. First, they need to learn to stay safe. Secondly, they need to learn to navigate social hierarchies. And the third is that they need to learn to communicate sexually. And the final core competency, they need to learn to be self-reliant. The first core competency is, is staying safe. Animals need to learn how to stay safe. Now, this is a huge issue because when you're a juvenile, a bird or a mammal, and you're protected by parents, um, you know, you are relatively safe because they're around. But when your body gets big enough to be outside of parental care and supervision, but you lack experience, you're in deep danger. It's called being predator naive. The king penguins who live in South Georgia Island, which is about a thousand miles off of the coast of Antarctica, every December, the new adolescents um, walk to the edge of the water and they have to dive in to these frigid waters and for the first time by themselves, um, go off and find their own food and really start adult life. And the juveniles, so the pre-adolescents, won't go near the water. But something changes when they become adolescents. What is changing? Their brain biology. Their brain biology is making them be bigger risk takers and more impulsive and watching what their peers do to kind of mirror that. In other words, that brain biology that we think is such a problem in humans is actually promoting the necessary behavior. It's driving them into the critically important developmental transition into adulthood. They need to enter the water. The neurochemicals that, um, that are associated with rising mood and falling mood in humans um, track with status in animals. When an animal rises in status, what we would consider maybe popularity, there are pleasant neurochemicals that are released. When they fall in status, um, the opposite happens. There are uh, two colonies of hyenas. There, there are two groups that study spotted hyenas. Um, one of them is in the Ngorogoro crater in Tanzania. And um, we tell the story of one of the um, hyenas uh, who was an, a young hyena and how he navigated social hierarchies and dealt with this issue of uh, what we call kind of animal privilege. And the reason that we think this is important for not just adolescents themselves, but parents and, and all of us is that um, we can, if we can understand how this works, what are the factors that shape um, advantage and disadvantage, then we can have a better understanding how to create structures and schools and even societies where there's more um, opportunity, where there's greater equity. We were looking at lots of behavior in animal adolescence and some of the most heartbreaking and recognizable uh, behavior of an adolescent animal is their early attempts at courtship. The, the sort of fumbly uh, dances and rituals and that you see um, are, you recognize what it will become, but you see that they're not there. Animals may reach puberty, but that does not mean that they start having sex right away. In fact, in a number of species that have been very well studied, for example, a couple of um, albatross species, Lazenal albatross and Galapagos albatross, between the onset of puberty and when animals actually start to have sex, when they start to copulate, it can be five years. What are they doing during those five years? They are learning sexual communication. They're learning these dances and these um, kind of these moves, which are signaling and they're practicing and practicing and practicing. So there's a lag between a body that can make offspring, right? That is producing viable sperm and viable eggs. There's a lag between that and when the animal is really ready in a sense. And the corollary of that uh, is that sex is easy. Copulation is easy. Sexual communication, uh, which is courtship, is much harder. And I think that can help inform human sex ed, where we tend to emphasize, um, at least when my kids were in middle school and, and high school, when they were taking um, 
I guess it's called health class. They don't call it sex ed anymore. Uh, but a lot of it was about, you know, putting a condom on a banana and protecting yourself from sexually transmitted infections and, and pregnancy, all of which could not be more important, obviously. But when you kind of look at what you really kind of need um, in a whole life, learning to communicate sexually, which is not just about expressing what you want and who you desire, but really learning to understand the feedback that's coming at you and um, processing that, that, that that takes a long time and that maybe we should think about having our sex ed courses um, focusing maybe a little less on copulation and more on courtship. One of the biggest challenges as a parent is knowing how much to help, right? So you have an urge to help when, you're, when your child at any age you know, needs something, but you also recognize on some level that if you help too much, there's the you know, enable disabled phenomenon, right? You want to know what that proper um, place is. And here again, how wild animals move through adolescence can teach us a lot. There are a number of other species and there's so many colorful stories and um, wonderful descriptions of this, but my favorite um, are the Spanish imperial eagles, where the, the parents, the mothers are very gentle generally and wonderfully kind of nurturing. That's a bit of a, maybe that's a little bit of an anthropomorphism, but if they're, um, they're adolescent, offspring, right, their fledge, um, seems reluctant to leave the nest, they start to amp things up and they actually start to have conflict. Uh, they, and that conflict can actually escalate into actual violence where there's a move that the Spanish imperial mother will put her talons together and kind of dive bomb to the nest where the adolescent is and literally thunk the adolescent out of the, out of the nest. So sometimes you need to offer extra care. Sometimes you need to give your offspring a push, a boot out the door. We humans, all of us know people who are sort of chronologically adults, right? They are, you know, in their thirties or in their forties, fifties, et cetera, but they have not mastered those four core competencies, right? They don't need a they don't know how to keep themselves safe. They are not, um, they don't know how to navigate social hierarchies. They cannot communicate sexually um, and they aren't self-reliant or they aren't self-reliant. We all know people like that. In the wild, if an animal makes it through adolescence, its rigors um, and its challenges, what is um, crafted by that beautiful critical period is a pretty majestic adult.